Hi everybody, this is Dennis doing the book and record playthrough for The Black Hole, Walt Disney's great movie um, from The Black Hole. Uh, you know, this was kind of their answer to uh, Star Wars. It's a 24 page book. It's a 33 and a third. Um, this one's issue uh, 381. And uh, we're going to go ahead and do the uh, the playthrough of this. Um, this was cool. This was one I never even had as a kid. So I wound up picking this up on my trip that I was just on. So let's go ahead and uh, do the playthrough for the black hole. And uh, hopefully you guys will uh, This is the enjoy. story of the black hole. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. The explorer ship USS Palomino was speeding home toward Earth. Her weary crew had spent many months in space, searching for planets where humans could live. Although their mission was over, their greatest adventure was about to begin. As the crew went about its duties, the image of a gigantic black whirlpool began to form on the scanner screen. Dr. Kate McRae watched in amazement. What incredible power. It's swallowing comets, planets, even stars. A black hole, exclaimed Vincent, the ship's robot. The deadliest force in the universe. Nothing can escape it. Charlie, the youngest crew member, had another surprise. Captain Holland, there's a ship sitting motionless on the edge of the black hole. It's not being sucked in. According to the computer, it's the USS Cygnus. But that's impossible. The Cygnus disappeared 20 years ago. And how could any ship defy the force of a black hole? All right, crew, let's go down and have a look, ordered the captain. Charlie, prepare to dock with the Cygnus. As the Palomino found the docking platform and gently landed, Kate looked out the viewport. I thought I saw something move. There are people on board. The airlock opened, and the captain cautiously led his crew aboard the mysterious ship. Don't take any chances. We don't know who or what to expect. I quite agree, Captain. Added Vincent. Better safe than sorry. The captain led the way as they explored the vast, empty hallways. No signs of life anywhere. Let's try the control tower. I want to see who's running this ship. An elevator whisked them to the top level. The door opened to reveal a tremendous room full of computers. Kate looked around. Something's not right. There's no one here but robots. I don't much like the company of robots myself sniffed Vincent. Just then, the crew looked up to see a red mechanical monster hovering above them. His sight panel glowed angrily as he advanced toward them. Vincent moved to protect his friends. The dangerous red robot drew closer. A voice boomed from the shadows. Exmillion, stop! There is no way to welcome guests. A bearded man stepped into the light. I am Dr. Reinhardt. Captain of the Cygnus. It's nice to have visitors after being alone for so long. Alone? Asked Charlie. What about your crew? They left in emergency shuttles when the Cygnus was disabled by a meteor storm. I remained on board, developed this robot crew, and continued my research on the black hole. But how do you keep from being pulled into the deadly whirlpool? Asked the captain. I developed anti-gravity forces to hold my position. We are perfectly safe. Come, let me show you around. Exploring on his own, Vincent met a battered robot named Old Bob, who whispered an urgent warning. Reinhardt lied about his crew. They're still here running the ship. He turned them into robots, and the same could happen to your friends. Come on, shouted Vincent. We must warn them. After hearing old Bob's story, 
Kate was shocked. Why would Reinhardt do such a thing? He's obsessed with the idea of going into the black hole. When the crew wanted to go home, he electronically took control of their minds in his laboratory. We've got to get out of here, warned the captain. From the control tower, Dr. Reinhardt had secretly monitored old Bob's conversation. He watched angrily as the Palomino crew dashed back toward their ship. They've discovered my secret. Next million. I want them stopped. Send out your sentry robots. The fierce sentries had quickly blocked off all passages leading to the Palomino. The crew was trapped. Vincent turned to Captain Holland. Surely a huge ship like these Cygnus would have some sort of escape craft. Of course. Vincent, you're a genius. Old Bob cut in. There's a small probe ship nearby. We'll cut through the garden. Drew followed old Bob into Dr. Reinhardt's huge indoor garden. As they crept silently through the dense maze of plants, Kate breathed a sigh of relief. We've lost them. I don't think so, Kate. Shouted the captain as laser blasts crackled overhead. He turned and fired at the oncoming sentries. Come on, Drew, let's get out of here. Alarms sounded and dozens of sentry robots appeared. There was no place for the crew to hide. They've got us surrounded, shouted Charlie. The captain drew his laser pistol. Well, if they want to fight, we'll give them one. Laser guns fired. Deadly streaks of light crisscrossed in the passageways. This is the first fighting I've done in 20 years, shouted old Bob. I feel like a kill the deal. The robots proved no match. One by one, they were destroyed in a blaze of sparks. Charlie viewed the smoldering sentries. Reinhardt's got plenty more of these, and we can't fight them all. Let's take the air car, replied old Bob. It runs through a tunnel along the side of the Cygnus. The sentries won't be able to reach us. The crew dashed aboard the air car and sped away toward the probe ship. Suddenly, large, fiery rocks rained down on the Cygnus. A meteor storm, shouted the captain. He stopped the air car as a meteor ripped through the tunnel ahead of them. Come on, we'll have to continue on foot. Something else, Captain, added Vincent. The meteors have damaged the anti-gravity field. The Cygnus is beginning to drift into the black hole. Old Bob led the crew to a bridge over an enormous storage room. They're almost to the probe ship now. Look out! Screamed Kate. Another meteor! A gigantic ball of flame came crashing through the room right at them. They raced away as the meteor smashed the bridge where they had been only seconds before. Approaching the door to the probe ship, the crew found their way blocked by Maximilian. His poised laser guns fired. Oh, Bob's been hit! Shouted Kate. Vincent looked at his friend lying wounded on the floor. Captain, run for the probe. I'll handle Maximilian. Vincent rushed at the red giant and pinned him to the wall as the crew ran safely by. Maximilian caught the brave little robot in a crushing grip, but Vincent only sneered. It's time I put you in your place. One of Vincent's panels opened and a whirling drill appeared. It tore into Maximilian's control panel. Sparks flew and the red robot toppled over. Vincent had won. Vincent raced to old Bob's side. Come on, there's not much time. The Cygnus is already starting to break up. No, Vincent, this is my home. I belong here. You go ahead and watch after your friends. I'll never forget you, said Vincent sadly. Goodbye. He boarded the probe ship just as it blasted free from the Cygnus. watched as the crippled Cygnus was sucked into the black hole and crushed like an eggshell. Captain shook his head. That looks like our fate too. This probe is programmed to go through the black hole. Gripped by the immense gravity, the probe ship fell faster and faster into the huge whirlpool. Suddenly everything was calm. They had come through safely.
Before them stretched a giant universe, filled with planets and stars that had been swallowed by the black hole. Kate was stunned. What will we do now? Well, we can't go back, replied the captain. But that's no reason to give up hope. We've been trained to find new worlds. Let's go find one for ourselves. Well, there you go, everybody. There was the black hole. Um, somebody had asked me if I would do Ernest Borgnine's voice for the voiceover, but sadly, he did not even make it into the book. So, uh, hey, as always, make sure you guys hit the like and subscribe button. Leave your comments down below. Um, did you guys like the original movie? Have you seen it? I know a lot of people who haven't seen it yet. Um, this was a solid movie. Like I said, they were trying to capture the movie of Star Wars at that time. Uh, but overall, I thought they did a, uh, a nice job. This is a, a pretty fun story, pretty interesting. And uh, when I saw this book in record, and the record's in great shape, you know, kind of had to pick this one up. So as always, you know, check out uh, the project we're doing, Core Draft the Reckoning. I'll leave the comments down below. 76-page uh, comic book of uh, barbarian storyline, high fantasy, uh, you know, meets Dungeons and Dragons, meets Game of Thrones. Um, and then uh, also join us on Wednesdays where we have comic book artists and writers on, and we do live streams, and you guys can ask questions. It's uh, They're always great interviews. And then you can also check out our quick flips and full reviews of comics. So thanks for joining, and we will talk to you all real soon. Have a great day.